Welcome to Framework Fortune and welcome back Framework Fortune community. I'm your host Ben and today we've got a special guest joining us, a long time, very experienced trader in the stock market, futures market, and just life in general. Josie Wells, how are you today, buddy? Oh, I'm all right. How about yourself? I'm doing pretty good, man. As good as I can be nowadays in this crazy world we live in. Man, so, you ain't man. <laughs> So, Josie, you've got a pretty extensive uh, past experience in the futures markets and assets trading, everything like that. Can you give us a little bit of a little, little bit of background on that? Well, I mean, well, what do you want to know? I mean, I I started trading. Um, oh gosh, my daddy was in a CEO of a banking corporation. Uh, and if you know anything about a banker, you're not going to get anything for free. Yeah. So I haven't wanted anything. It was always, you know, you got any money on me? And, you know, I, I, I wanted to do what he did. Um, I originally started getting into bonds and stuff when I was very young. Um, and I still have a lot of those bonds. Some of them from the... 70s and 80s and stuff of that nature. Wow. Uh, but yeah, I started there. And then I got into, my daddy always watched the news. So I was forced to watch the news. Um, <laughs> you know, David? I know. You're watching, I, you're watching the damn news. Yeah, you want, exactly. You're watching the news. Otherwise, go in your room. Yeah. You know, um, <laughs> always watching the news. It's always financial. And I was really interested in trading. You know, I started, I think I bought my, I think I bought my first stop probably back in 80, uh, 84 or 85 when I purchased my first stop, somewhere around. Um, yeah, so you were, you were back when you had to call in to make a trade. You could, there weren't no computers or anything. You had to actually pick up that telephone and dial it. <laughs> There was no other way to do it. I mean, we had computers. I had a computer. Um, I started working on computers in 81 or 82. Um, I started writing programs on computers. And back then, it was a Texas Instruments computer. It was the biggest hunk of crash you ever saw in your life. Yeah. Um, there, was no, there was no operating system. It's not like you turn it on and Windows popped up. Yeah. It turned it on. You turn it on and a cursor popped up. You know, that's all you got. Yeah, the and coding, yeah. Write your program, you know. Um, but yeah, I started trading stocks back then. You used to have to call in. Yeah, and, you know, the, the fees were absolutely enormous. Um, I actually couldn't believe it when TD and Schwab and everybody went to zero fees. I was like, oh my God, zero <laughs> fees. Are you kidding me? Somebody's getting paid here. Yeah. Hey, getting paid here. It's the damn market makers are the ones getting paid. Yep. I mean, it's order flow, you know. Oh, They're yeah. buying order flow. Oh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, these were astronomical. I mean, you're talking about $70, $80 a side for a trade, you know. So once you initiate the trade, you're already into it for 150, 160 bucks, um, depending on how many lots you bought at the time. Um, and you know, I I went through the big um, dot com craze and the crash, and I went through the crash of '08. And, uh, when I went through the crash of '08, um, I got hurt. I lost a lot. Yeah, a lot. Uh, I think a lot of people got hurt in 2008, even if they weren't trading in the markets. Just yeah. not a good year. Mm -hmm. I lost a lot of money. And I decided, you know, I always watch, you know, commodities, corn, soybeans, stuff of that nature. Um, I decided I to uh, just start learning how to trade these these products um in futures um you know i always watch the s p 500 and nasdaq and Dow Jones. um 
I decided I want to learn how to train them, and I started training, or I started learning. Um, and, um, you know, I used every demo account that they put out. Um, if, if there was a broker that had a demo account, I was using um, Yeah, so you were paper trading. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I wasn't ready. Um, and I finally got into it and started trading. And I was making a little bit of money here and there. Um, and eventually a guy had reached out to me um, and wanted to teach me. Well, I definitely took the opportunity. I mean, I'm not going to let you give force in the mouth. Exactly. Uh, so, you know, and he was tough. He didn't give you a lot of information, but he put you on a path. Yeah. And every time he puts you on that path until you jump to the end of that path, you found what he was looking for, he wouldn't put you on another path. And he pretty much wouldn't talk to you. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, it was rough. I mean, he, he, he was a tough trainer, or he was a tough teacher, but he was right. Um, mm -hmm. And he did what I needed, apparently. Uh, and I've been trading teachers ever since. Yeah, and I'd say you you have a, a pretty good living now since you took that path uh, and had that training, it sounds like. I do all right. I mean, you know, I don't want to keep my <laughs> Still, you know, I'm not, I'm not out here um, drinking gold or nothing. I don't want like that. I mean, I say, hell, I'm still driving on big ass SUV with mud tires on. <laughs> if I want to drive a big ass SUV with mud, if I wanted to go out here and you know drive a Porsche, I'd go drive a Porsche. You you live a comfortable life, you know, for those new traders who think that. Everything they see is all flashing lights uh, on YouTube and stuff like that. There are people out here who make a lot of money or at least make a good enough living to be comfortable just off of trading. Like, this is oh. a real goal that's attainable. This is not, you know, some fairy tale uh, dreamscape. But, like yeah. you said, you, you paper traded. It sounds like you had a mentor. Uh, you went through some down times in the market, which. A lot of new traders are not, they've not seen downtimes in the market yet. <laughs> you know, 2008 was downtimes. A lot of, yeah. a lot of, you know, people in their early, early 20s and stuff, the young traders there. I but, have lost fortunes and made fortunes over and over again in the market. I found a niche um, in futures trading that is just something that. I, I, where I'm at now, I'm not going back. Yeah. I can read this, um, you know, and, and it's a lot about, can you read the market? Can you, can you follow the things that need to be followed? Um, mm -hmm. make yourself a set of rules. Definitely. Um, if the rules don't always work out, you can't throw the rules away. Right. Um, You've got to, you know, and you, you've got to say, well, okay, well, the rules didn't work out, um, but let me keep going. Maybe it's just a, a, a fluke, a one-time thing, um, you know, it's, you screwed something up. A lot of trial and error. That's that's what I've found in my experience. And I write everything down. I, I keep, I go through notebooks like, Jimmy Carter goes to the liver pills. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, this is gonna be this is gonna be a great episode or two already. I can tell. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, you know, I, you know, I write every trade down, and I have a column that I make, and it's why. Um, and that's what it says at the top of the column. It says, why? Well, why did you take the damn trade? You need to know that. You know, the good trades you look at and you smile. The bad trades you look at and you read over and over. Yeah. And you say, why? Why? And it says why right there. And then you look back and you go, what the <laughs> thinking? You know? Yeah. I mean, 
your role's right there. Why did you, how did you screw this up? Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I've got sticky notes posted in different places uh, all over the office or all over my workspace. Yeah, me uh, too. You should see it. It's like a paper paper mache fiesta going on. Yeah, you know, I'm sitting behind two foot of computer screens. But one of them's as simple as cancel all I got hung out. I won't lie to you. I screwed up. I made a rookie mistake. And usually when I make mistakes, they're rookie mistakes. And I'm like, what the F is wrong with you? <laughs> uh, and, and you're mad at yourself. You're like, no, give me a beer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> rookie mistake. Rookie mistake. And you know what? I look back at my mistakes on paper and I go, most of your damn mistakes are rookie mistakes. What the hell is wrong with you? So I got post-it notes everywhere. One yeah. of them is, well, is cancel all. I had lined up a bunch of orders um, on the NASDAQ. And most of them hit. Most of them targeted out. Made money on most of them. It's right. Well, I'm going to go to sleep. There was that one order that didn't get hit. <laughs> and I didn't cancel it. I didn't uh. cancel uh, the future's run 23 hours a day. So I'm waking up in the morning, I'm $6,000 in the hole, and I'm like... You said you have 60000 in the hole? No, uh, that's six. Oh, 6000 okay. I thought you said 60000 Okay, 6000 still bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it was still rough. Especially yeah. when you got big red numbers on everything, and you're like, what the hell is going on? Yeah. And I'm looking at it, I'm going, I didn't make that... Oh, I didn't cancel the freaking orders. What the hell is wrong with me? You freaking rookie. <laughs> well, I took myself outside and I broke off the switch off the uh, weed from Willow Tree and I spiked myself. <laughs> and, you know, it, 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 it's simple stuff that screws you up. It's simple stuff that screws me up. I do stupid stuff and I go, you, you know, I was down. Um, over, I, I posted on uh, your your uh, your uh, your live stream. You know, I was down like over two thousand dollars the other day. Yeah, I, managed, I, I managed to trade. The problem is, I effed up my mathematics. Um, as far as I, I I didn't count in the fees for the last contract. Mm. So I had five dollars instead of getting out flat but i top picked it i did pretty good i couldn't have got much i probably could have got the five bucks out of it but pissed me off i was mad as hell it's like I, I like to say a lot your biggest enemy in the stock market is yourself like you're the one who's making the trades most of the time it's human error if you're taking big losses and stuff because you you can't control how much you make in the stock market you can only control how much you lose. So if you are losing more than you should be, then more than likely it's you, not not some other force of nature or market makers or whatever. You know, there's a lot of excuses people like to use, but you have to uh, acknowledge that you are the one pulling that trigger. So you are the one responsible. Yeah, there are no excuses. Yeah. There's no such thing. Um, you know, the buck stops with you. When you take a trade, you got to think you're you're taking a trade. You're one of those big guys out there. I'm taking a trade with the big guys, um, but you better act like a big guy. Mm -hmm. uh, every other manage risk. Um, yeah, I was I was down. I have looked at volume profile and stuff of that nature. So I know um, that market maker is going to have to push that market. Um, yeah, he's got to fill these orders before he fills those orders. Why? Because he needs to get these orders out of the way. The market maker that is not filling orders, he's not making money. Yeah, um, that's what they get paid for. They paid for order flow, and you know they get paid to move the stuff on through. Yeah, and the other reason why, if you have a stop loss in pretty close, like a really tight stop loss. It was in, in my case, in day trading the low float stocks, you will see 
a lot of times that's that don't price will yeah. wick down, wick right down to your stop yeah. loss and wick you out. And then it jumps yeah. right back up. That's the yeah. market makers pushing yeah. the orders, getting them out of there. Like, Oh, this a-hole just put an order down here. Well, guess what? You just got filled. Now the stock can rip. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean that, that's, that's, that's correct. I mean, they will. Definitely. And it can be annoying too. I mean, it can oh, yeah. be the most frustrating thing, but sometimes yeah. It might not be the market makers, and you may save yourself from taking a big, big drop, you know. So that's why you still got to have that risk management, like you were saying. You're still going to have that risk management. Yeah. Um, and I won't lie to you. I, I get out there, and I trade naked sometimes. But I do. Um, I'm guilty of it. You can get hurt really bad. I, you know, futures depend a lot on economic news. And yeah comes out from government and stuff of that nature, you know, that'll really move um, a futures market. So you have to pretty much stay on all the politics stuff and all the economic stuff if you're trading futures because that all that's going to directly affect it. Oh, absolutely. Man, that Fed comes out and talks. That, that's the big <laughs> move of the week. I mean, you know, it, I could play one day a week and, you know, make a very good living. Yeah. Um, well, Let's talk about the Fed for a second, since you brought them up real quick. What do you? What is, <laughs> now the Fed has been out a lot, and they keep saying they're going to taper. And now originally it was that they were talking about talking about talking about tapering. Now we've got to the point to where though they're talking about tapering. To me, it sounds like it's all talk, and they can't take any actions. From what I see in the bond markets, and from what I see. It, with inflation and everything they're trying to do, I don't think they can taper without crashing the stock market or crashing the economy. And at the same time, they can't stop inflating because they keep spending money. The government keeps spending money. So I think the Fed's stuck in the rock in a hard place. That's just my opinion. But I'd love to hear your insights on that. They're, they're, what you see is smoke and mirrors. Um, <laughs> What, what they're going to give you is smoke and mirrors. Mm. And the reason for that is um, we've got rising inflation. Um, we've got supply line issues. We've yeah. got, you know, uh, the entire country is in a shambles. We've got people living underneath a bridge. we got 15,000 people living underneath a bridge in Texas. <laughs> um, you know, I, what they, they ha they, it's the man behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. uh, pay no attention to him, um, and we're going to tell you whatever we have to to appease you at this point in time. Um, and that's what the Fed is doing. That's what Kyle's always done. He's a he, he, I've got really bad words for him. I won't use them because I know you might post this up. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, but I mean, Yellen's no better, and no. she's in the middle of it now too. Yeah, uh, I know. I know. Uh, for, for investors who's been around a while, who's familiar with Pal and Yellen, this is like kind of our worst nightmare that's happening right now. <laughs> Even dead now. <laughs> oh, like, oh, you've got to be kidding. You're bringing this thing back on your holy. <laughs> um, you know, they, they, they're going to blow smoke up your, up your tailpipe. Um, until it breaks. Yeah. When it breaks, you know, they're going to say, we didn't see it coming. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's, it, it's just going to be a misdirection or responsibility until then. Do I think they're going to taper? Yes. Do I yeah. think they're going to ever get? No. Why? Because inflation is killing them. Mm -hmm. uh, and inflation is stopping them from tapering because... The federal government can't give you bad news mm -hmm. unless it's in the numbers. Data comes out, and all you got to do is go on something like investing.com and go to news and go to calendar. Mm -hmm. um, it tells you everything that's going to happen that day. So yeah. you know um, the Fed's going to talk at 12 p.m. Well, I don't want to be near the damn market when that's not bitch is talking. <laughs> I mean, I just didn't go and get my firecracker in my behind. Yeah. 
Exactly, man. When when Jerome Powell said on live TV, he said, "Oh, inflation is not a thing anymore. We we can still print. We can print as much money as we need to." I literally, yeah, I, like I, I just want to slam my head against the wall. It's like, what is this? Like, what real? Like, really? <laughs> I mean, I'll jump on the train right after he talks, but I'm not doing anything till after he talks. Yeah. He used to be able to, when, when President Trump was in office, it was great. Um, it was easy. President Trump's going to make a live speech. Okay, well, I need to be on the damn computer. Yeah. <laughs> computer. Log me in the Wi Fi. Hey, can, can, can I tether off your phone? You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I'm going to be on you right now. It's going to move. Yeah. It's going to move. Yeah. Tomorrow, it's going to move. Um, oh, yeah. But don't predict which way it's going to move. Just jump on the ride and, you know, yeah. ride for a little bit and hop off. You know, it's like I was a kid. We used to hop the train behind crystals. And, and Tucker and I jump off the top of the train into the rocks and beat ourselves up. We didn't care. You know, hop on the train and run. So the, the problem, most people, the problem is they want the whole con. Well, if you try to take the whole con, the king is going to cut your hand off. Yeah. Um, the best thing you can do is take a slice and taste how sweet it is and let everybody else have their piece. Yeah, don't um, get greedy in the markets. No, you, you can't bottom tick and top tick a market. I mean, you can, but I mean, you may as well go out here and buy a lottery ticket. Yeah. Uh, but, but get on the trend. Yeah. Um, just don't get shook. And hey, that's running your stop too close. You were just, say, just saying something about that. You run your stop too close. They're, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna run the train on you. They're, they're going to grab your order and um, it's going to take off the other way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're going to be kicking a cat across the damn living room. Uh, circumstances I was talking about, you know, the Bollinger Band, you've seen my, how I would work those, was coming north. And I'm like, as soon as I see this and it breaks, the band breaks this candle on a northward, you know, on an upward motion, um, I'm going to switch from the three bar rule to my Bollinger band rule. Um, you know, it, 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 it's different things. Um, I have different strategies. I've got one chart that has three different charts on it. And the reason I have three different charts on it is because each one of them tells me something different. But I don't use them for anything other than direction. I don't trade them. Yeah, you just have them up there just to look at just uh, say, say, say this is the direction you're going to be in yeah this is the trade we're taking are we bull today we're bear today yeah um, at what point in time do we flip you know, what, what where where's the level um and you know i've been drawing levels i draw levels at least once a week the key points in the market yeah um, you know that, that, that's an advantage of because you trade stocks. Well, you're looking at a bunch of different stocks. I don't yeah. need stocks. Yeah. I, I've got one puppy to take care of. Um, you're trying to take care of a channel. Yeah. Uh, and I've got one puppy. That's it. And I've got other puppies. I mean, I trade a lot of oil. I trade a lot of gasoline. Um, I trade wheat. I trade corn. Um, I trade soybeans. Um, I trade the live cattle. But still, you don't have like where every morning in the stock market, it's a random stock or two or three out of thousands of thousands of stocks that you got to look at. Like every day is a new stock chart that you're looking at where in the futures, you are pretty much all the time looking at the same charts. Same stuff. Yeah. Same. I know how this puppy's going to react. Yeah. If he gets around somebody he doesn't like it. What's gonna, what he's going to do. If he gets news that he doesn't want to hear, you know, I know what he's going to do. Yeah. If he gets news that he wants to hear, I know what he's going to do. Yeah, I've, I've kind of learned that myself in the crypto market from where we only had a small list of tokens or coins to trade on Coinbase because we're in America. I've, I was only watching 10, 15 charts 
Well, there used to be a smaller amount, you know. Oh, yeah, even smaller than yeah, even smaller than that amount before that. But I didn't actually start trading cryptos till uh, this past year in December, in really? 2020. Yeah, no, I didn't start trading them till I was against them because I'm a gold and silver guy. So for a while there, I was like, man, I don't know. It doesn't. It's like <laughs> fake internet money. So I had to do my research, and I did a lot of research. And the more I got into cryptos, I was like, oh. This is something that's going to change the whole way the whole entire world works. This is going to interrupt and disrupt every sector. And I was like, okay, I need to be in this. <laughs> yeah, you know, my friend, I was I was the same with cryptos when they first came out. Um, I can remember when Bitcoin was pennies on the dollar. Yeah, see, I didn't um, even know what it was back then. I didn't even pay any attention. That's that's I got, I got in late. <laughs> I didn't too, man. I got into Bitcoin. Um, I didn't even get into Bitcoin. I think my average on coin right now is about sixty seven hundred bucks. Uh, so oh I'm my in, goodness! I, I, I'm in under seven grand a coin. Um, but I, I I got into it late. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I thought they were blowing smoke up my behind. I really did. And, and I heard Barney one morning start talking about it, and Bitcoin hits a hundred dollars, and I'm like, "Are you kidding me? <laughs> You've got to be kidding me! Bitcoin hit a hundred dollars." I listened to uh, Barney and company on it. Uh, <laughs> so I started looking into it at that point. You know, I heard the big Elon Musk thing. Most recent one was Dogecoin. Um, oh yeah. The big Elon Musk thing right there at uh, at the Super Bowl. It was was it this year? I think it was this year. Um, yeah, it was this. Yeah, it was this year. I think it uh, was this year. Yeah, it was February this year. And I said, okay, let's wait. And I got into Dogecoin at about four cents a coin, and I held it. Um, I got out and I got back in. I, I made killer money off this stupid ass in crypto. I knew the guy, a uh, friend of guy that invented Cardano, and he, I got into it less than a penny, less than a penny. Um, um, oh, Car, you, you said Cardano, I think I call it yeah. Cardano, but ADA. Cardano. He told me it was called Cardano, so. I don't, yeah. man, I don't, I don't hardly pay attention to what the names actually are unless I'm, you know, I, I just, I don't really watch YouTube videos on the cryptos. I actually go look at the white papers and stuff, so I really don't know how they're pronounced. Unless I hear somebody else say it, I just say it however that's, I pronounce it. I don't know if it's right or not. I don't care if it's called Sally Coin. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. I'll buy it, you know? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't, I don't really care about the name. It's about... If that thing, and it goes back to what you were saying about hopping in on the wave and, and what when Trump was tweeting and the market would go up, Elon's doing the same thing with cryptos, that same type of thing. When Elon tweets, you'll see Bitcoin or Dogecoin, one of them go crazy. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's hype. You know, that's always been the rule. The yep. problem is people get in there and they want to buy the news. You know, no. Rude, buddy. Let me tell you, you know why? Because I'm dumping this crap. Yeah. <laughs> buy the pipe. Expecting FDA approval. Or buy it. Yeah. Um, when the news hits, uh, wait for the spike and then sell it. Mm hmm. It's like they say, they say news sells. Um, and, you know, news does sell. And yeah. you should sell with it. You yeah. know? <laughs> You're right. You are absolutely right, man. That's the truth. I, that, I tell people all the time, like, that people ask me, do you trade earnings? And I'm like, hell no, I don't trade earnings. Hell no, I don't trade earnings. <laughs> I don't care what damn money they More than likely, they're already been pumping it before the earnings on the expectations, yeah, and then they're going to dump it. Fun. Yeah, every time. Well, maybe not every time, but more, more often than not, you're going to get burned because you never know which way those earnings. I've seen the best earnings just dump. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and oh, then yeah. the other day I saw a company said that they were just about to go bankrupt, but they haven't yet, and the stock ripped. Right. <laughs> I, was, I was like, this. see, right oh, here, wow. this is what I'm talking about. News doesn't matter that much. <laughs> no, no, you stay away from shit like that. Yeah. That's bad stuff. 
Yeah. You know, that, 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 that's like seeing, well, Powell's going to talk at, you know, 1130. Well, I'm not going to fucking try that shit. Are you crazy right now? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to sit over here. Employment numbers come out at 830. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, especially I mean, the last couple yeah. of years, those numbers have been real important because... You're putting yourself in in a whipsaw. You're putting yourself in a predicament where volatility is going to go through the roof. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I, I can look at my depth of market, and this thing's jumping, you know, on, on the NASDAQ chart. I mean, it has no problem jumping 25, 50, 75 points at a time. Yeah. Um, and it's just whipping back and forth. Why do you want to put yourself in a whipping booth? Yeah. <laughs> myself in a whipping booth? Yeah. I don't need a matrix or nothing like that. I need to get beat like that. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll take the sure trade. Um, you know, when something doesn't match up or, you know. I, That's kind of something I've added to my strategy intraday is I don't trade the first 30 minutes of the market. Uh-huh. Or at least I try not to because that first 30 minutes is insane. It's so volatile. See, I'll trade the first 30 minutes, but I will not trade the first five. The first five? Um, okay. It, it, every once in a while, that first five, I'll jump on and just take a short scalp. But it is so volatile. It is so nasty. That first five-minute candle is the ugliest thing you've ever seen in your entire life. Oh and that's God. on, like, you're talking about the Dow Jones future? I normally trade the NASDAQ. Okay, the NASDAQ. That's right, the NASDAQ. Sorry, yeah. I trade the NASDAQ. Well, it has the most movement. If you look at the markets, look at the points gain during the day, you know. Um, it's like now. Um, what time is it? Markets closed. The NASDAQ actually finished down 31 and a quarter. Um, S&P finished down 7 which is the ES. And the ES is $50 a point, where the NASDAQ is $20 a point. However, the NASDAQ moved more than four times the amount of the S&P. Why the hell would I trade the S&P? The Z contract, so it's NQZ, but NQ. Okay, now it's showing on TradingView as the E-mini NASDAQ. Even in NASDAQ, that's it. Okay. I was just making sure on trade, because Thinkorswims, some of their futures and stuff are different than the tickers on TradingView. And I've seen this the same thing with a couple of other things, too. Do you know why futures are different on um, TOF? No, I do not. (laughs) I have very limited futures knowledge, so. Because TOS is a continuous contract. It's not a month-by-month contract. Ah, okay. Um, in futures, contracts rotate uh, every three months. Um, I keep a calendar. It's one of my little post-it note thingies um, that have the rollover dates and what it changes that last letter to. Because right now I'm trading on um, NQZ, as in zebra. Well, it, it, at the beginning of the month, I was trading on NQU as an umbrella um, because the U contract, the volume in the Z contract and the U contract shifted right around the 10th or 11th. I have to look back. But when the volume shift, well, I want to go where everybody's trading. Exactly. I don't want to be over here in a sand lot, you know. <laughs> so when I see the volume shift, um, I'm going to shift contracts. TOS is a continuous contract. Um, therefore, it doesn't go month to month. It's just a continuous contract. Yeah, there's no rotation. It's just one contract going the whole and, time. And their their uh, market data feed for futures, it really sucks. Does it? Um, okay, good to oh, know. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it, it does. I'm sorry, it does. Um what do you use for a broker? What, what what broker do you have? Which one? <laughs> the one you're trading your futures on. Um, I trade on Transact. Um, actually, it's Infinity, which is a division of Transact. And I also trade um, futures on TraderBase. 
I like Trader Bait. It's a very, very simple platform. That's, um, and that's Trader Bait, like fishing trade, bait, or Trader Bay? Trader Bait. Um, T R A D E. I don't know how do you spell this, and I'm looking at it right here. T R. Uh, yeah, T R A D O V A T E. Oh, Trader Bait. Got you. Sorry, I got you. I got you. Trader Bait. Yeah. But you know, and, I, and I've had accounts with Ninja and several other places. Ninja's got a great platform. They really do. Um, it's a little bit more complicated than Trader Bait. Um, Trader Bait is the most, the easiest one to look at and manipulate, and you should always keep it simple, stupid. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, I can, I can, I can teach my people Trader Bait easier than I can teach them anything else. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I'll be honest with you, I retired. Um, I, 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 I don't, I don't have to do this. I like to do this. Yeah. So. I'm the same way. I love it. I love trading anything, stocks, I, cryptos, I'm whatever. I'm, yeah, I'm addicted to it. Yeah. <laughs> It's a way of life, man. Once you've been doing it for so long, it's like it, it really becomes a way of life, and it's just part of your every day. You're just looking at charts, and, and you're not even thinking about it. You know, you just pull your phone out and be like, oh, okay, that's where that's at. Good to know. And then you right. go back I, to what you're doing I and get, stuff. Like, it's it's just oh. second nature. Yeah, I get so freaking bored, man. I can't. <laughs> like, I've got to go. Yeah. Excitement. <laughs> you know, I wake up in the morning, and I'm just dying. I'm going 9:30 is going to come. This thing is going to start bouncing all over the place. It's going to be a wonderful day. What kind of news do we have? We want to see what's going on? What time is it going to move? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm just I, I need I need the thrill uh, more <laughs> than anything. I, uh, it's probably more the thrill than anything. Yeah, um, but. And now you have your own students and stuff, but you don't you don't do any big classes or online courses or anything. This is like a private exclusive thing and uh, is you keep a very small class from my understanding. I'm running two classes. Oh you're running two classes now, okay, okay. One is pretty much just selective students and then I run a private class. Okay. Um I teach about five people um, every six months to a year and uh i do charge for the private class but i mean i'm gonna put a lot I, the amount of time that i gotta put into it i make less than somebody does at mcdonald's yeah i know that's the thing man this thing with youtube and stuff i'm putting so many hours i'm like i you know i don't i don't know what i'm making per hour but i'm just going so <laughs> yeah, and I don't want people to take my private class. I try to push everybody away. There's assessments and stuff I make you do. Um, but yeah, I don't want you to take that my private class. I I don't need the damn money. Yeah, it's just you just don't have the time to do it. That's I'm the same way. I, I that's why I don't do private classes and stuff because it's too it's too much time. If I have to teach one person and I've got a hundred students. And I'm teaching them all at different times because everybody's got different schedules. I mean, it's it's almost impossible, really. You know, I post up about once a year on my Facebook page. If anybody wants to take a class, I've got an opening. Um, but, yeah, I don't take more than five. Yeah. Um, it, it, and that's one of my requirements in my class. You can't, you won't, I won't let you out of my class, and I won't graduate you or anything until you make every freaking dime back that you paid me. Um, nice. Until you're profitable, um, I don't know. Uh -uh. Absolutely not. That's not the way I want. That's not why I'm doing it. Right, exactly. That's, you know, that's yeah. why that's why I like having you on talking to you because, you know, I'm the same way. Um, I had the website m more for people who want to be more exclusive in the community and stuff, but... You know, I'm only charging two dollars a month for membership, and that basically just pays the cost of the website. I'm not making any money off that, but I don't want to make money off of traders, especially new traders. I want them to make money, and I don't want to take their money. You know, <laughs> you want to try to give back. 
to give somebody knowledge and give somebody a way of life, give somebody something they can take with them, feed the family, teach the kids. I mean, you know, just the gratitude I get out of people from like the live stream that I do on Saturday. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's worth more than, I don't, I'm not sure you can write me a check that day. Yeah, somebody might be able to. Maybe, <laughs> yeah. maybe, maybe Elon can write you that check. <laughs> but yeah, I know I get what you're saying. Right so, um, and they don't have the money, but they can write the check for it. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, I, I, I don't think there's something that can be more gratifying than teaching somebody else. Yeah. Um, especially when you take somebody that has had a hard time and stocks or forex or something you go, let me teach you a little bit about futures and i get a lot of gratification out there i've got several um people from the larger group the, the the one you've seen that are just like oh my gosh this is great and everybody <laughs> seems to be making money and you know they they just want more explanation so i do it you know i do it once a week and well, there's, there's a, let's be honest here. There's a lot of, a lot of people on YouTube and on social media who claim to be traders and all that, and will say they will teach you and all that, but they're not really teaching you anything, or they're only giving you a small piece of the puzzle until you buy their, their special courses, and it's just, it's, they're just, you know, they made up some strategy with the VWAP or something, candle that does this off the VWAP or something. They're not. You know, they're not looking to actually teach people. They're just looking to grow their reputation and get rich. They're looking to capitalize. No yeah, look, yeah, and so there's a lot of smoke and, and mirrors that the new traders have to go through coming into the to the market. Now, I think more than ever with the Internet at this point, it's it's oh. more, I mean, you, you have so many treacherous traps surrounding you when you start coming into the stock market on the internet especially like the whole amc and gamestop the apes <laughs> man i I, yeah, I won't lie to you i had amc i bought amc four dollars and change um i got out of it way too early way <laughs> too early way too early and i, I did gamestop the same way it was in the four dollar range um I had a buddy of mine tell me, you're crazy. That thing's going to go to zero. And I was like, okay. Um, well, I mean, it's $4 and change. It gives a shit. You know? It's $4 and change a share. I mean, Yeah, you know. but but you didn't come in buying it at the top, though, like we, we're seeing a lot of people now. Because you still see people on social media saying, oh, buy AMC. Keep buying AMC. And people are coming in buying at the top and getting dumped on. And I, and like, I don't know why AMC is so high anyway. Um, they've got so many obligations they're not fulfilling. Um, they, they've got a lot of debt. Um, you know, and they, I know they have more than just the movie theaters. They're, they've got a TV station and all that. Right? Yeah, but they were, them and GameStop both are dying companies with the way everything's going digital and you got you VR might, you, and all that. I think you, you, I, they, they were out the door anyway. Yeah. Yeah, you want to talk about a bubble, these are bubbles. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's going to end up being a fart bubble. Beyond, beyond <laughs> yeah. um, For That's so, why I don't mess with them, man. I stayed away from yeah. them all. I think I you day traded what? AMC once or twice, just quick little in and outs, but I'm not holding I, that trash. I won't lie to you. I am holding a little bit of AMC, and the reason why I'm holding it is Somebody was talking about it and whining about it on, on a page that I'm on, and I said something that was um, very truthful. Um, <laughs> however, it made me feel bad because I knew that they're, they're, they're so deep in it. I mean, um, they they couldn't get to the top of the water if if you pulled the plug on a bathtub. Um, so. <laughs> I said, okay, I'm, I'm going to get in, in it with you. Um, and I took a very small portion, just money I could throw away. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, yeah, I mean, and I think I'm in it at like 40 even, somewhere right around there. Oh, uh, now, yeah, 40. for that pity buy, you get you did a pity buy oh, for no, the... <laughs> I, that's, that's exactly what I did. That's exactly what I did. 
You're a nice guy to take a pity buy for that guy for whatever you said to him must have been real truthful. <laughs> yeah, the truth hurts. Yeah, you know. Well, let it do whatever it does. If it goes to zero, it goes to zero. I don't give a shit. <laughs> it won't be the first stock I rode to zero. Frontier Communications absolutely slaughtered. What was that? Oh, what was that stock? Frontier Communications. Oh, it was. It was a few years back. And you know what? I'll tell. I'll tell. I'll tell you a story here. Um, in my trade on Frontier Communications reminds me a lot of this story. Um, the first experience that I ever had with the market, and I don't tell a lot of people. I really don't. Um, and I don't care if you post it or you don't post it. I don't give a shit. Um, my first experience with the market was um, I was at home. I was a child. I was very young. And my daddy came into my room and said, I got to go to the bank. You want to go with me? And my daddy gave me an opportunity to go with him somewhere. I went with him. Mm -hmm. um, so we jumped in the car and we started going, driving down the road. And I said, Daddy, this is not the way to your bank. Uh, he said, we're not going to my bank. We're going to a different bank. Okay. So we end up in this big high-rise building um we walk in there and uh eventually we end up in a back office with a man behind a big desk in a big beautiful office and daddy's writing a check and you you gotta understand this was the late 70s early 80s um i watched my father write a check for ten thousand dollars yeah i was very confused um because i knew that he was president Another bank, and I knew better than to say anything because I get my ass beat. Um, <laughs> so when we walked out of there and got to the car, I asked him. I said, uh, "I said, Daddy, why did you write that man that check?" He said, "Well, son, I had to pay off a loan." I said, "Well, Daddy, what was the loan for?" He said, "Well, I bought stock in a company, and it was either going to make it or it was going to die. Probably fifty percent chance." And he mentioned the company, and I knew why he did it, because he had worked for him before, and he believed in them. Mm. Um, and that's why he bought the stock in the first place. Yeah, he's trying to help him out. And I said, well, why did you write the man a check? And he said, well, it was to pay off a loan. I said, a loan? He said, yes. I had a signature loan, which is pretty much just your signature saying, you know, I'm going to pay you back if I fuck up for $10,000 to buy a stock. I said, why don't you just use your own money? He said, son, you never gamble with your own money. That's pretty much like my real estate strategy and everything is like, why would I spend my own money, especially well, now with inflation going up? Because if you're no, borrowing money now and inflation's going up, you're paying back less money than you borrowed, less value than you borrowed. You got, you got to think. I mean, home prices as far as... Um, uh, your interest on your mortgage in the 60s and 70s, it was not going to have a 15 or 17 percent mortgage. Yeah. So you had a good rate. You got 15 percent. That's a good rate. Yeah. But that was because there wasn't as much inflation. So the houses were a lot cheaper at back then, cheaper as in U.S. dollar form. But that, you know, that's how the interest rates and everything works. It just fluctuates with inflation and deflation, which in my opinion, I don't think should be controlled by any human sources. I think those are part of the law of uh, supply and demand and, and how currencies should work. But No, this is, this is part of switching from um, an economy based on a hard metal to an economy based on air. Taking off the gold standard. So now, now what's the standard? whatever the fuck we tell you it is. Yeah. But yeah, I mean I mean you're right and and that's what I'm saying about the uh the the law of supply and demand like you have to have a currency that has a demand so it has to have a value to back it. And we have a fiat currency. So like you said, nothing backs it. It's just whatever they want to do. Now I don't know if you oh. saw this lately, Biden and the Biden's administration are tossing around 
doing a $1 trillion platinum coin to offset inflation. <laughs> everybody, I, everybody I said this to who knows about economics and trading just start shaking their head as soon as I say that. Why, why are you shaking your head? Look. People, I, I mean, they just make shit up as they go along. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I mean, really, seriously. Uh, it, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. I still can't believe we bombed 10 innocent people in Afghanistan. And um, the dude was in his driveway. And the secondary explosion was uh, the, their IEDs in their trunk. No, it wasn't. It was a fucking propane can that was sitting on, on, in the front driveway. You hit yeah. the man in his car and killed seven of his kids. One of them was two years old. Oh, my gosh. I heard about the story, but... Oh, my gosh. It's ugly. That's another thing. It's like... Uh... Not only do we have all this economic pressure, which most people are not really even aware of, we have all of this... Uh, political and social pressure and divide that it's we're we're in a state where i personally think america's the next empire to fall and it's like you something you were talking about in one of your uh your private streams that i joined was cycles and right. that seems to be that's a cycle the the empire cycle cycles come they start out and they're decentralized and they go through building up and then the government builds up and then it gets too centralized and then the cycle starts back over. The empire falls and you go back to decentralization to build back up again. And we literally did this as humans over and over again in history since the beginning of time. And America's just come to its time, I think, at this point. I mean, the, the, the rules of time exist and... Um, History is never new. No. <laughs> um, That's very true. So I've been studying I've been studying market movements since I've gotten back to about eighteen early eighteen sixties. I try to find as much as I can on some of the historical people that traded the market. It's hard to find before nineteen hundred. Mm -hmm. um, anything you find before 1900 is just a gem, usually. I mean, it's like somebody handing you a diamond and going, here, look at this, if you can understand what they're saying. Well, yeah, that's um, the thing. A lot of people don't know. Je the candlesticks that we use are Japanese candlesticks patterns that go back centuries. Absolutely. All the body was conducted in this price range during this aggregation time. The wick is... Will the next candle fill the wick? Because if the wick doesn't get filled on the next candle, those people are trapped. Mm -hmm. Whoever's in the wick is trapped. Yeah, that's a, I've never uh, heard it put that way, but that's that's really good. Yeah. But yeah, I mean that's what a wick is. A wick is a trap. You know how I work bands and stuff, and um, when it gets outside of the band, when it goes through that that band that dog is outside of the cage he's got his hand through the cage it's gonna go back in the cage but it can't get out it's got to stay in that cage the indicators that i've ever used are the best indicators some of the simplest ones volume profile oh my gosh now you can get just volume which is at the bottom of the top. Yeah, yeah, no, I've got volume. So what's volume profile then, as far as an indicator? Volume profile will actually give you numbers if you spread it out big enough. Volume profile... What I would consider volume profile is the profile of how it's moving with the buying and selling coming in moving those bars but I, I never use this indicator so I'm, I'm not exactly familiar with how it works the market maker wants to be in that volume because that's where he's going to sell all his contracts he didn't make any money if he had moved a contract it, and you can that's why I like looking at it like that the volume on the bottom is great and I do watch the volume on the bottom but the volume profile it gives you level it gives you targets it gives you stop, you know, where you see the volume decrease 
the market's not going to stay there very long. Why? Because there's no buying. I've got no buyers and no sellers. The market makers over here eat soup during that time. So um, the way this is set up on the on the side here like this, if I was to turn it upside down and put it under the candles, that's how it would be reading, right? Kind of, not really. Because this tells you, you can enlarge this and you can actually see numbers. Um, usually, I don't know if yours has got on it. Uh, no, I don't see any numbers on trading view. Uh, but usually when you enlarge your volume profile like that, and you, you'll see numbers. Okay. Which are how many numbers of contracts, or if you're watching a stock, how many numbers of shares were actually traded at that price. Oh, I got you. So that it's coming off of the price. Right. Got that's you. How many contracts were traded at that price. Yeah, so that's the volume at that price, basically. I got you. I got you. That is exactly correct. That is the volume at that price. You can see there we where go. most people are sitting. Um, you know, there was a there was a lot printed right there. Mm -hmm. um, if you move your cursor up, you can see. You know, it, there was more volume. There was more contracts traded at that price than there were. At, you know, 14, yeah, I can't even see the damn screen. I'm trying to look at your screen. 14,750. Um, at 14,750, you can see how many contracts were printed. Yeah, there wasn't that many. It was a lot, lot lower volume, but you can see as the as we're hitting through price levels, more volume is coming in at areas. But a bunch of volume came in here at 15,000. That's a whole number, so it's going to be... A support and resistance area more than likely so you had to have a lot of volume to break that and, and, support and that you can see that on that candle right there breaking it and you can see the volume in relationship to the candlesticks mm -hmm. um they kind of flatten out when it gets into that big volume mm -hmm. you want to keep it there uh, i i mean people are paying commissions on this shit mm -hmm. you know when it starts getting outside of volume like the peak up there at the top you see, uh, yeah, up there, when it starts getting out of the body, I'll start getting worried. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's no there's no more contracts getting filled up in these prices, so it's going to come down. Yeah, yeah, you're in no man's land. Yeah. <laughs> Luke Skywalker, Ben Kenobi, you're outside of the realm. On your chart, it's short. I yeah, it's a short. Short. yeah, and you can see too right there where it would have been a nice short. But that volume right there, you see, went away. It, the price was coming up, and then at that price level, no contracts getting filled, so sell off. Right. Yeah. It wants to come back into volume. It needs to come back. You can't sell something unless there's somebody willing to buy it. Yeah. Uh, this is a great indicator. I love this, Josie. Thank you. You just taught me something I did not know. You can see something. You can see where people are willing to buy it. Mm -hmm. These are where people are willing to buy it or willing to sell it. Um, yeah, it's almost can't. like it's almost like a um, a more visual level two kind of. But level two has some shystiness where you, you have ghost orders and stuff like that. You know, those are actually. What's that? They're actually illegal. Oh, the ghost orders? Yeah, I, yeah, I know they're illegal, but it still happens. <laughs> I mean, you gotta catch somebody. I mean, you can't really prove it, you know. It's, yeah. It, it, it's awful, but yeah, I mean, the ghost orders. I've had several students send me pictures of ghost orders that are out there, for you know, somebody wants to buy, you know. 300 contracts of the freaking NASDAQ at a certain price, and you're like, that is fake shit. <laughs> and they do, it, they do it bad. When you're trading like soybeans or oil or gasoline or um, corn or anything of that nature, um, they do it bad. They're, they're, they're bad at it. Oh my gosh. You'll see them and they'll just disappear right away gets to it and it's like you son of a bitch yeah. you just threw the damn market all the way there 
Yeah, I, I see it in the, the low float penny stocks too, man. They'll there'll be an order pop up on the sale. It looks like uh, it's going to be major resistance. It'll be like oh, a hundred thousand shares all of a sudden one order, and then it'll drop down, and when it comes back up, it's gone. And it's like oh yeah, right, that didn't get filled. That just got they just took the order out real quick, and then it it'll pop up. But they'll That's throw those exactly. orders in there to control the market, like you were saying. The market makers have That's to exactly. kind of control the flow. Well, man, I'm running out of time. I'd love to keep picking your brain. I think we're definitely going to have to have you on for some more episodes of just us talking and, and you know chatting it up because I learned a lot here today. I appreciate you jo- coming by and joining us and speaking to the Framework Fortune community. And hello to all of your community. I know some of you guys out there have been waiting for this. So this is this is always awesome to meet somebody and talk to somebody who's a genuine person and genuine trader who's been doing it for a long time and that type of opportunity is is I'm very thankful for to be able to learn from your expertise your experience I appreciate your kind words I've been watching you ever since you first started you know that though I, yeah I know man I feel sorry for you <laughs> Got, been watching this ugly face for that long, man. Whew, might cause brain damage. <laughs> I'm, I'm not real big on doing online stuff and things of that nature and putting myself out there, but uh, um, I, I want to support you in way I can. Well, I appreciate you doing it, man. I appreciate you coming out of the uh, coming out of the war hole, out of the bunker there to. Say hello to everybody, cause I'd like to see you around the channel more, man. You got you got a lot of uh, good knowledge up there in that brain, a lot of valuable knowledge. Well, I mean, if people are interested, I'll be more than happy to. Um, oh. I, I don't have a problem with that. I, I like I like to teach, and I, you know, I like banter back and forth. Get, give me a scenario, ask me why. I I want to answer the question. I do, you know, like I said. Earlier, you know, I, I, I've made fortunes and I've lost fortunes. Um, yeah. Yeah. This one is not one. I, I, I'm getting too old. I can't. I can't. I can't lose another fortune. Yeah. Uh, I don't go through 08 again. I really don't. Yeah. Um, and, and the pop of the dot com bubble and stuff. I mean, I mean stuff of that nature. Just it, it really it. I went through it a lot. Um, well, with all that you went through, man, what, what's the what's the most important words right now that you could tell a new trader? You think that may put them on the right path as far as what they should be doing, or maybe what rules? Some something just just a little uh, trinket there to leave them off with. If I had to say anything, I would say. Find the thing that you hate the worst and trade nothing but that. <laughs> what, 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 once you can, if you can wrangle your demon, then you can further yourself. It may focus you a little bit. Um, hmm. You know, I talked about I had to trade the hardest damn thing in the world. I had to trade the Australian dollar. That was my goal. That's what I was told to do by the person that taught me future. And you want to talk about something's hard to trade. This sound bitch will wear you out. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's awful. It doesn't react the way it's supposed to react. Um, it's like the juvenile of um, futures, and it's just it, 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 it's ugly. Well, they have a lot of manipulation, I think, in their in their oh, Australian God. dollar. <laughs> they kill you. <laughs> it's Australian dollar futures. It's not for it. Um, it's actually on a futures market. Most okay. Of your, most of your currencies are on the futures market. Right. Um, British pound, uh, New Zealand dollar. Um, I traded a lot of New Zealand dollar. I traded a lot of. Australian dollar, oh my gosh, but it, it's tough. I mean, you, when you move from something that's as hard as trading the Australian dollar to like crude oil or something, um, you just, 
gotten one of these recliners back here kicked back and uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, you're on cruise control now. And you're like, oh, this shit's easy, you know. <laughs> and I've been trading the freaking Australian dollar for the last year. Are you kidding, <laughs> you kidding me? It makes a killer living. Oh, you know somebody, you said you know somebody who just trades IBM for a living? That's all he's done for the last 20 years. Makes a hell of a living. He's very good at it. He's but, got one puppy. That's the only puppy he looks at. He knows how a, that dog reacts. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good point. So, learn the hardest thing, the Australian dollar, and then focus on one puppy. Grow that puppy to an adult dog, and then worry about other puppies if you want to. But once you've got that first dog, that's all you need for the rest of your life to continue to be consistent, profitable traders. If you can do that, then you can do anything. Yeah. Well, Josie, I appreciate having you on, buddy. Guys, if you want to see more of Josie, hit the like button. Leave us a comment. Say, more Josie. Appreciate everybody joining us as always. Stay safe out there. Until next time.